Hi, everybody. I'm Rick Hansen for the Foundations of Wellbeing, here with doctor and professor, as they would introduce you in uh, Germany, or professor and doctor here, uh, James Doty, who is a professor of neurosurgery at uh, Stanford University, as well as the founder and director for the Center for Compassion and Altruism Research and Education at Stanford University, which was in part uh, funded through a very generous gift from the Dalai Lama. Um, we are going to be focusing here, as you know, on the topic of service, both, uh, we could say, local service, everyday acts of generosity uh, with people we know well and often people we don't know well, as well as larger uh, reaching, farther reaching uh, acts of service that take into account the world as a whole. So in that context, if I could uh, ask you this, uh, as a young person, you decided to go into medicine. And what moved you to want to become a helper uh, in a helping profession, uh, healing suffering and addressing suffering in that way? Well, I think there are two aspects. One is oftentimes children of alcoholics, which I was, uh, end up um, becoming care providers because oftentimes they're children caring for adults. And this gets embedded in them that they're always trying to fix people. Now, in some ways, that can be extraordinarily positive, but other ways it can be very negative in that you can become codependent and always be searching out people to repeat a relationship you may have had with a parent that was not particularly healthy. So that's one way you can go down to the path of being a giver or a provider. Uh, the other way and, is, and a way that might be problematic and you're trying you're helping us distinguish between different kinds of motives for being of service to others exactly yeah. and so the former if you will because I'll tell you the latter in a moment but that that example does not necessarily create a healthy situation mm -hmm. uh, because what happens is oftentimes you have your own deep pain and suffering which has not been resolved and now you're sublimating that by always being in a situation where you're caring for others so I would tell you that that is not a healthy uh, type of service. But the other way is to be around people or see individuals who are inspiring individuals, and it is their selflessness, mm -hmm. their kindness, their compassion that makes you aspire to be like them because oftentimes when you're around people like that, you feel good. Yeah. Uh, uh, and you see the power that they have in their authentic, selfless caring for another. It changes the dynamic of the environment. So when I was in fourth grade, I did not know what I wished to be, if you will. And a individual who was a pediatrician came to my school on, I think, career day or something. And <clears throat> um, for reasons that may still be mysterious, he somehow picked me out and came over after and started talking to me. And we had a wonderful conversation. He allowed me to ask him questions and treated me, if you will, like an adult, didn't talk down to me. And really, uh, I had no under, my, neither of my parents went to college. I had no understanding of what actually the path that being a doc, to become a doctor entailed, but he, he so moved me by his kindness and his manner and demeanor that at that, that moment I decided to be a doctor. What helped sustain you along that journey? Um, you know, being a college student, uh, you know, pre-med, med school, so forth, uh, residency. It's a long journey. Uh, what helped you stay interested in being of service to others and relieving suffering? Well, again, and it, this may sound naive because, in fact, I think it probably was. Oftentimes, <laughs> what we aspire to as an adult when we're a child is really not without true knowledge or understanding. But in this case... Every, uh, and we talked about my background, 
you know, being on public assistance, having parents who are ill, puts you in situations where, frankly, you have to rely on other people. And sometimes that involved being in a hospital situation. And frankly, sometimes being in a situation where you're forced to be in and actually people don't care. Hmm. And the power of not caring, it's demoralizing. It's dehumanizing. And you see how that type of an attitude can ruin lives and, and, and take away a person's dignity. And then when you're presented with the counter to that, it changes everything. And you see the power of it. Every interaction changes from a doctor who shows no empathy or compassion and thinks you're wasting their time. That affects how the nurse interacts with you. It affects the whole environment of how you're treated. And then you see someone who cares selflessly treats you with dignity. And it's huge. And just the simple interactions like that, both good and bad, were so powerful to me that it made me even more so want to be the person who cared and who would actually truly look at people because what happens in so many times in our lives we walk by people we don't really look at them when you take the time to look to truly see then there's this explosion of opportunity to care and have an impact and mm. <laughs> the goodness you get back from that yeah. It's, it's so powerful, it, it makes you want to repeat that. And we know this is a reality because it's based in science. Mm. We know that when a person cares, who acts selflessly, it has huge benefit to them uh, from a, a physiological uh, perspective, from a mental health perspective, and even it, it affects the length of your telomeres in terms of longevity. And Those so the, are the end caps on the molecules of DNA that are related to uh, age-related illnesses as we get older, right? Yeah. Right. And, and uh, you know, there have been studies that have been done that show uh, that when somebody is of service to others in a selfless manner, in an authentic way, it has a huge impact. And so while on the one hand, uh, you know, I can sit here and argue how good it makes you feel, which is all true, it also from a scientific perspective is good 